Howdy all. My inking hand is tired, so I'm going to use my drawing hand, which is the uh, same hand, just different muscles, to do a little doodly, daily doodle. I'm going to talk my way through this and auction this one afterwards. I have no idea what I'm drawing. I haven't decided. We will see what happens. So I'm going to start with the head. Head's a good place to start. As I mentioned in one of my videos, I like to sort of mark what direction the face is looking or so on. At a very early stage, it just helps me think. Uh, very likely, very rarely do I like to have a face that is looking directly at the camera or in direct profile because that can feel a little bit awkward. Um, I also like to put a lot of contrast in terms of, in this case, if I have the face looking one way, I might have the body twist another way. And still have no idea who this is, but it'll be interesting. See an arm crossing over. Um, you can see I would like to keep this stuff really basic to start with. And uh, kind of just a suggestion of a hand. I'm not worried about the details. I'm sure I'll change it. Uh, in this case, I sort of, and this is something that I've done a lot, and I've done this sort of hand a lot, so it might be cheating. But um, <clears throat> I just kind of get a suggestion of what the hand shape is going to be put in maybe one finger as kind of a master finger to establish what's going to happen, and then other fingers I just hinted at them, but as you can see, they're already sort of wrapping in the same way the other one is just the same direction. Uh, this is probably going to be Black Widow or Red Sonia or someone. I don't have a lot of imagination when it comes to daily doodles. So let's see. I'm going to work out a muscle set up here. Um, and then, uh, again, this is, I have to confess, this is a sort of pose or sort of arm position I've done a lot in the past. Of course, the trick is you want to kind of keep an idea of how much of a contrast you get between the thickest part of the arm and the thinnest part uh, for your figure. Because that can not only determine just uh, how strong they look, but also just more broadly their uh, their sense of bulk. And you'll excuse my voice, it's annoying under the best of circumstances, and right now it's a little bit hoarse. Um, I think this is going to be someone with a gun or a laser or something like that. So I'm going to have the other hand. Uh, I don't... Like always having them two parallel, having them sort of cross or something like that seems a little more fun. Uh, I'm not sure in this case why uh, this character would be looking in a different direction, but I've never actually followed any rules before ever, so I guess now would be a silly time to start. Just eyes. Obviously this is barely even the hint of a, uh, an expression right now or anything like that. I also have to say, uh, I'm not sure that I really have a specific formula. There are obviously there are certain ways I tend to work over and over, uh, especially when I'm relaxing just because my brain works. Having said that, I don't know if there's a, a particular formula in terms of a lot of the times when I draw stuff, I structure it this way. There are other times when I'll just randomly start from some limb and build around it, or I will you know, draw a whole skeleton out first or so on. Um, I'm not sure what is the right way, or if I ever follow the right way, I'm guessing not, but, uh, but if there is, you know, sorry, this is what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna put one of her legs here and the other one there. May or may not change that, uh, where you put legs and how they cross over each other, um, can always be uh, a bit of a trick. Especially also right here, you want to make sure this whole area doesn't come so busy. Another thing I notice, I put these little lines here uh, from time to time. This is also, for anyone who's a designer, for things like comics, those lines are great. You have characters that have belts or boots or so on. Um, there's a different discussion about whether that's a nice sort of thing to have on purely aesthetic grounds, but it's extremely helpful when you're drawing uh, characters jumping around and so on because uh, it can really help give a sense, as you can see here of uh, what angles, uh, parts of the legs are at, what direction, so on. Um, and, you know, even even when you don't have it... Uh, oh, that's dreadful. Whatever. Uh, <clears throat> even when you don't have uh, have that stuff in the final artwork, you can help just to think about it. Um, I think there's going to be some sort of... I don't know. Let's just say Black Widow. Or... A 
Black Widow-ish character. Another thing I do a lot of times is the eyes, you know, may or may not be more or less symmetrical. That depends. But with the eyebrows in particular, I try to avoid too much of that. And also with the mouth. Um, it can make things harder. I don't know if it necessarily makes things better. But I always try and, um, I guess when I was a kid, for me, drawing uh, wasn't even so much a skill set as so much as it was a, uh, a way to entertain myself when we didn't have... Uh, a lot of money and stuff like that in the house, which was pretty much always. So, um, so drawing for me was just like making up ridiculous stories and so on. And that's still kind of what it is even today, where I will totally just make up entire characters or, or stories, uh, or even some of my story uh, comics and lines. Comics and ideas have really just come from, uh, from drawing characters and having them sort of develop a, a bit of a personality while I'm, I'm fleshing them out. And no matter how many times I've drawn over something, I'm never afraid to draw over it again. That's why I always start light. Well, usually, sometimes I do not start light at all. <clears throat> Here, you know, when I draw female characters, not always, but most of the time, the, the focus, as far as I'm concerned, is really on their action and how awesome they are. Uh, so they may be uh, pretty, uh, then again, most of my guys are pretty uh, attractive too, but uh, the main thing is how cool they are, so... Um, I like to make sure while I try and keep it elegant and simple, I try and show things like if they're jumping and doing some crazy strain, um, I like to show that. Let's see, whoever this character is, she's going to have some crazy bombs or whatever strapped on her, uh, her chest harness. these sorts of things. There's nothing wrong with detail, but you'd be surprised how often you can just sort of hint at certain things, uh, like those buckles and so on, when that's not really a huge focus. Uh, you can also see here, I'm sort of drawing through her arm for this part. Um, her chest is not going to be front and center. Uh, obviously, it's largely covered up. Having said that, uh, it's still, the mind still obviously connects, uh, fills in blanks. So if uh, you don't draw this stuff through, and I've been drawing for a very, very long time. If you don't draw that stuff through, no matter how good or bad you are or how much experience you have, it's still easy to make unnecessary mistakes, unforced errors. So that's just a little something that's simple to do. So for these hands, for this part, I would say, you know... Um, basically goes like that. So even though this one finger has been lifted up, so if you're looking at a slightly different angle, it actually is like this, this part still uh, exists so that the knuckle on the middle finger, for example, will be lower down. So this knuckle is here, this one would still be down there. And again, this is the sort of thing, there's nothing wrong with drawing it in, even if you end up erasing it, just so you can tell. And then you can see... Uh, canister or something. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I'll say for faces, uh, try and think, uh, follow through with everything. So if the eyes are doing something or if the eyebrow is, try and keep in mind that the rest of it is too. So in this particular case, um, her eyes are more or less as magical, but if you look um, at the rest of it, it should be, you should have at least, even if it's subtle, a clear sense of, for example, one eye is down, uh, one eyebrow is down, one eyebrow is up. In that case, this side, the whole side should sort of squash together where this whole side should stretch out. So that if you were looking on it, this side would be more likely to have a wrinkle there, for example, whether or not you choose to or not, and the mouth would be more likely to be drawn up on that side. 
So looking at this now, seeing how the mouth is drawn up here. Nice, slightly, ah, uh, slightly getting messed up is what's happening. Uh, <laughs> The eye might slightly be more narrow on this side, might not, depending on, again, how, how much you want to distort things. But you still think about carrying it through. Let's see. <laughs> ah, belt. I have uh, belts like this relatively low in characters. Uh, I don't know if that's the right thing or wrong thing to do, and there's certainly no reason why it's particularly realistic, uh, but I just like it because it, it helps make whatever's in the belt feel heavier. I mean, it also frees up the waist area um, so you can show more movement and so on. That's also why I'd say, uh, I don't know about anybody else, but uh, for me, I spent many, many years in my misspent youth and misspent adulthood and misspent pretty much everything um, designing all sorts of stuff, largely for fun. But uh, the, the good thing about that is that um, because I spent so long doing that sort of stuff for, for fun, I can now, um, as you can see, I can now come up with all sorts of design material, logos for characters, anything like that, relatively easy. You know, I always try and take care to do it right. But I've drawn costumes sort of like this or thought about things like belts and so on for, for so long that I can do something like this and add some of these sort of details in uh, relatively mindlessly compared to starting from scratch. I guess computer outfit, uh, just because, um, I don't know, maybe I won't, just because I like showing sort of uh, different areas, not having uh, something like, for example, an all-black costume head-to-toe, you could do that, that's something that sort of translates better in something like a movie sort of environment, though, where there's uh, just a lot more lighting detail and so on going on that the artist, or designer, I should say, doesn't necessarily have to think about. showing things all scratched up because that's, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm always running into things and banging myself up, but uh, it seems like uh, something that you could expect for a char from characters who uh, spend a large amount of their professional and or recreational time running around blowing things up. Yeah, I'm going to do some sort of ridiculous swimsuit sort of top for her. I like to have characters overloaded with gear. I don't know if there's anything particular uh, about that. I just, I just like it. And this is some of you may know long, long ago. Also, I miss my misspent youth. I uh, did a pitch for like sort of like young, cool Hydra versus Shield. I never went anywhere, obviously, but uh, again, that was the sort of thing where I came up with all sorts of designs specifically for that. But the great thing was I had them afterwards uh, to use, you know, sort of already worked out in my mind. I also like doing uh, a lot of times these sort of uh, finger glove things. On the one hand, they, um, they arguably are, I don't know if realistic is even the term when you're talking about, you know, half the stuff that people like me do for a living. But uh, on, the other, on the one hand, this is the sort of thing which connects enough to uh, to what people would recognize ex as experience from seeing movies or seeing paramilitary or whatever. Um, so on the one hand, it just is a nice sort of visual short shorthand that works and makes sense for the audience. Um, on the other hand, once again, I like doing like little gloves or little finger things because it uh, adds a lot of business if you want it, and I always try and keep that business streamlined. But it adds, you know, it gives me an, a second... Uh, 
a second way, a second tool to show where the different knuckles are, for example, or to show how the uh, to show how the, the hand is angled or whatever. So for me, that just uh, like I said, one more tool that I like. Blacks. When I was younger, that sort of thing used to intimidate me. Then one day I realized, ah, I don't really care. It's fine. Again, this is sort of situation where it'd be really handy to have um, have something like this, this leg here. But uh, I already have this other business going on, which makes busy, busy enough. And in fact, maybe uh, too busy. But um, but in this case, you can use things like, for example, where the muscles. There are, I didn't really show them on the other one, but here. Here you can do it, let's see. Just some random crazy gadget she has around because she's not Black Widow. Of course, that would be all sorts of copyright trademark issues, but a Black Widow-like character. Let's see. All right, I'm going to draw her holding a gun. You will not see most of that finger, but... But again, I'm going to put it in there so I can... Kind of work around that. Also, I'd say, once again, this is the sort of thing where I have, I'm certainly not a master of this by any means, but I've drawn enough guns and so on that I can get a rough, a fake idea. You can see how I'm building it up. I'm drawing a very boring, normalish looking gun today. I apologize to the ghost of Jack Kirby. There's nothing wrong with actually looking at a real gun and making a real design, but that's not happening today. So I'm trying to do stuff, the next best thing, things that feel like they could be in a real gun. Never hurts, just kind of check the perspective a little on this. It's not that dramatic, but still. Just so I can kind of see where things have gone and realize that this thumb now, they actually have a hand in place. a lot of this is just having years of doing it. As I talk about building a pattern with a hand is you might have uh, the pattern and break it just a little so that, for example, uh, one obvious thing is if you had three fingers like that, you might have a fourth one coming like that. Another one that I also find myself doing sometimes, uh, and I should be careful of it because it's easy to become a sort of uh, habit without thinking through it, is if I have this finger like this, so it's kind of in that way, the lower ones might go like that. So this finger, this uh, pinky finger ends up coming out. And it's still, it's sort of creating, creating a, a hierarchy of tension. So you have these four objects, two of them match up more or less. And then there's one that breaks with them, but it's still in their larger group. And then the fourth one breaks from them much more fully so that it creates a tiny little bit of tension and dynamic. Um, even here, I've got these little handle grip things. Um, that's not their technical name. But uh, but you can still use those by having those wrap around 
like this, it can help sell a little bit more the idea of the volume. Foot. I mean, basically, I'm just drawing a foreshortened footprint to start with. I just like making up kind of ridiculous uh, footprint uh, and tread patterns. You'd think I would uh, be...